Hello everyone. As my dad would say, first mistake of the day, I almost just started recording the video without flipping my camera around and it would have just been showing you my window. That would have been pretty cool, huh? Anyhow, against my better judgment, I decided I'm going to go ahead and make my video about the season premiere of The Masked Singer, okay? I know that I, when I was recording last night, um, some of y'all might think that I had al already seen the episode because I said, I know some of you who have already seen the episode might be sitting there going, oh, but Snail went home already. And, um, you know, spoiler alert, just in case you haven't watched the episode yet and are intending to watch it, stop watching this video right now. But first, subscribe and like the video. Maybe I should have said that before <laughs> before I told you to stop watching. But anyway, um, yes, spoiler alert. Snell did in fact go home. I did also I did say though that after um I said that some of y'all might have been like, but Snell already went home if you had already watched it, that I felt like Snell would go further than some of the other characters. Um there were some of them that really surprised me. I did not feel at all like Snell was the worst performer. I feel like Snell was eliminated because of who was in the outfit. And I was disappointed. I'm sure there were a lot of people, a lot of kids who were like, Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yay. Whoa. But I was like, okay. Um, yeah. To me, it was just really, really, really weird and went to prove that you can never tell who or what might be inside one of the costumes behind the mask. So, that being said, I had downplayed Seashell <laughs> whenever I was doing my before I watched the episode um, video about who the characters were, what characters were going to be on the show. Seashell's outfit actually has a shell around the back of it like this, like a great big shell also. And I feel like I didn't do that right, but there's a shell that's behind the one that, that is her head. And then there's also one on the back of the outfit that is lower down, I guess, like by her lower back. Um, so first of all, her outfit is cuter than I was thinking it was. And second of all, she was one of the top performers of the five. Um, of the five, there were two that I really, really liked, which was her and Robopine, which I previously called Porcupine or One-Eyed Porcupine. He corrected everyone to let everyone know that he is actually Robopine. And like I said, he's got the steampunk vibe and just really, really, really super awesome. I really love his outfit. So... <laughs> what I wanted to start off with talking about, about the season premiere, of course, is the fact that I made a joke about people who had already watched being like, but Snell got eliminated already. And then when I posted my video <laughs> on YouTube, what does it do? It pops up like, you know, I went and did that I was posting it and then it pops up in my subscription thingies. And I think it was Joey Contino, maybe, that it popped up and it was like, Snail got eliminated. Snail is revealed on The Masked Singer. And I was like, wait, what? No, I didn't want to see that before I watched the episode. So, yeah, I was like, um, okay, not psychic. If I was psychic, I would be so much better. I'm not saying I don't maybe have a tidbit of psychic tendencies from time to time usually a connection to somebody that I'm really super close to, that if something bad happens to them or they're in an accident or something, I can tell, I can sense that, there, that there's something wrong. But clearly not psychic, or I would be getting every single person behind the mask on the dance, uh, on the dance singer, on the mask singer, correct, right? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, like, smack my head, I did not know that Snell was actually the one that got eliminated and was revealed when I made that video last night. I swear to God, I had not already watched the episode and I did not know. So I was going to wait until I had had a chance to watch at least twice and write down more of the stuff on the clues because a lot of times they just go so fast. And this season, actually, with there only being five characters um, per group and only two groups, it seemed to me like they talked through the clues super, super, super fast and it was really hard to keep up with what the clues were and to catch them all and everything. And I was like, okay, I know you want it to be harder for us to figure out who they are, but give us a chance to freaking see the clues, you know? So anyway, on episode one, 
I want to mention that I was watching the episode and the first thing I thought they they were introducing Niecy Nash, of course, who is filling in for Nick Cannon, at least at the first of the season. She said she's not sure if she'll be on there the entire season or not at this point. But they were showing who the judges were, and I was like, oh, snap, I totally forgot about Robin Thick. Sorry, Robin. Sorry. I should have I should have remembered there were four judges. I don't know why. I totally completely forgot about him, but I did. Sorry, Robin. Um, but so the ones that were in group A, switch my hand because my wrist is getting sore. I know I said I was going to get a thing to hold this, but I never did. But anyway, the ones that were in group A were the Russian doll, which is actually a couple. And I was not aware of that whenever I started watching it. Um, apparently my sister knew that. She wasn't able to watch because she started working last night. And so, um, yeah, she wasn't able to watch. But she has the ability to watch. She has nothing to record it on, I don't think. Anyway, so yeah. There was the Russian doll. And, of course, Snail. There was Seashell, who I already talked about some raccoon and porcupine so i'm going to talk a little bit overall generally about the um characters and what i thought of them okay um like not this is not including the clues and stuff look i can sit it on my steering wheel anyway hopefully it doesn't fall anyway so what i want to say to start with is I was disappointed that I had already seen that Snail got revealed, y'all, you know. And so, when I was watching the episode, and um, I thought that one of the best ones, based on his outfit, was going to be Raccoon. And he performed, and I was like, um, he's obviously an older guy, and he was pretty entertaining, but he was obviously the worst singer of the ones. So I was like, I don't understand why Snail is going home. And as I said, I feel like they sent him home because of who was in the outfit is what I, is what I feel like. And for that reason, whenever they're fixing to reveal him, I was like, well, maybe it's Nick Cannon because Nick is maybe going to be on the next episode because Snail's going home right now. And he obviously was not the worst performer. But anyway, <laughs> not the worst singer. He may have been the worst performer because like Russian Dolls, like the one Russian Doll, the bigger one, he didn't do a whole lot of moving around on the stage because he was in the snail outfit, which was a beautiful outfit. I loved the outfit. I still love the outfit. One of the best, in my personal opinion. So now I'm going to talk about the individual characters, starting with the first to perform, which was Russian Doll. Um, as I said, the one that looks like the blow-up clown things that there used to be for kids to punch. Um, I mean, I'm sure they maybe still make them. Perhaps not. Well, actually, they had clowns and other stuff when I was a kid, I think, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure if I do or not. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit without it falling. Okay. Um, but anyway. So, the, the one... The doll was huge. I'm not saying the person that's in it is huge, but the doll itself was huge. And that one was a female. So when she was talking and they were showing the clues, which I think may perhaps only be for the female one, I don't know. That's what I was telling my son. The thing I don't like about when they have couples is you can't tell if they're doing clues that point to the couple itself or toward one or the other of the characters, or, the, you know, the people within the couple. So, given the fact that the female was the only one talking, I'm thinking perhaps those clues only relate to the female. But, so, there was one about Misfit. I can't remember. Misfit, Cafeteria, Cafe, maybe something like that. But I just wrote down Misfit. <laughs> and, um... I just happened to think Missy Misdemeanor Misfit. But anyway. Or Missy Misfit. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh my god. Anyway, Missy Elliot. 
misdemeanor, misfit, yeah, anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, but anyway, there was also a, I don't remember if it was a carton of milk or a cup of milk, I feel like it was a cup of milk, glass of milk, um, there was a boat wheel, like the steering wheel for the boat in the galley, there was a sign that said Garden State Highway, implying that she possibly is from New Jersey or some place that the Garden State Highway runs, which I don't know where all it does run. Um, I feel like one of the judges said that it runs in part of Ver Vermont or something, and I'm like, which really means nothing to me. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, and she indicated that she had been controlled by someone and is no longer controlled by that person. That's why whenever I was watching it and I'm thinking it's just a female, I was like, oh, well, maybe it's Britney Spears because she just got, um, you know, like her dad is no longer controlling her estate and her career and all that sort of stuff. She's not in control of it either for right now. I don't recall who the lady is that um, the court put in charge of that. Somebody that she feels that she can trust. But yeah, I was like, oh, well, maybe it's Britney Spears. Well, when... Then when, when um, Russian Dolls started singing, I could not tell there was a woman singing at all. Robin Thicke made a comment about the voices blending perfectly. I guess they did because I couldn't tell a female was singing. The song they performed was Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. And I'm like, oh, it's not a female. It's, it's a male. And then the other person came out and I'm like, wait, what? There, there are two of them. Like, it's not the first time that there have been two. Of course, there was Clint Black and Lisa Renna on last season, as I said. But I was like, I only hear one person singing. I did not, I could not tell that there was more than one person singing at all. To me, it sounded quite a bit like Michael Jackson, <laughs> to be honest. Not exactly, but quite a bit. But anyway, so my first guess, based on the fact that I had decided that even though the voice that they were disguising at the first sounded to me like a female, it was actually a male. So my initial guess, confusing Golden State with Garden State, was Kevin Durant. He used to play for the OKC Thunder and then went to the Golden State Warriors. And I'm like, maybe he felt like somebody was trying to control his career or something, you know. Like, I don't know. I don't really like where this is sitting. <laughs> Show my double chin. But anyway... I am who I am, and I look how I look, and that's all there is to that. But anyway, so yeah, then I realized that it was a couple, and I was like, oh, it's a couple. And one of the judges on the show said that there was a sign that said something about country. And Ken Jong was like, it's Gwen Stefani and her guitarist. And I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe it's Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. And Gwen Stefani is the one that walked out onto stage and Blake Shelton is the one that's in the other outfit. Gwen Stefani is not on The Voice this season. I feel like The Voice and American Idol and The Masked Singer all record at about the same time. But they are allowed to go to and from. Um, you know, it's not like they stay <laughs> at The Masked Singer thing the entire time that they're recording. So, I mean, you know, the, the entire season. But so I was like... Um, I thought about the fact that the female in her clues said that she was, like, her career took off, and she was really, really popular, but then new toys came along and took over, um, you know, so I was like, no, it can't be Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton. I feel like it's a couple that has been performing together for quite some time, and I don't mean this to sound wrong, but given the fact that the last couple that was on The Masked Dancer turned out to be Clint Black and Lisa Rinna, I'm really hoping that this couple is not Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks, because a lot of people were guessing them, including myself, um, instead of Clint Black and Lisa Rinna, and I feel like that would just be, like, too obvious, you know? But, of course, one of the... Um, couples that came to my mind that always comes to my to my mind whenever uh like they came to my mind whenever the last couple was on there is Donnie and Marie Osmond now there were some other ones that came to my mind like 
I always think Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers, and I'm thinking that I looked up both of them last season when they were, when the other couple was on there, and that I just found out that Kenny Rogers had passed away, and I was like, oh yeah, I guess I should remember that, but I don't, don't quote me on that because I don't remember that that was absolutely what the case was, but there were some other um, singing couples that I thought of. Of course, I thought June Carter and Johnny Cash. No, wait. Can't be them. And then I was like, um, Tanya Tucker and George Jones, I feel like, sang together for a while. Trying to think. But there are a lot of people, you know, there are a lot, lot, lot of people that it could be. It may not even be a country group. They could be two people who agreed to do the show together, but did not perform professionally on stage before. That like a brother and a sister, people that are really good friends. But they did seem to me to actually be singers, or at least the guy seemed to be a singer. And I'm pretty sure the female said that she was. Can you hear me over that car that sounds like my car sounds when she's running a lot of the time? <laughs> Just wondering. Not sure where that car is. But anyway, the next one that performed was snail even though i've already told you that snail was revealed i'm going to tell you the clues that i picked up though i didn't write down all of the people that he was he was um name dropping <laughs> i didn't write down all of the people that he mentioned but i'm going to tell you what song he performed and um who i thought he was and stuff such as that okay so, there was a piece of um, poster board that had all of these things written on it that Snell had done in his professional career, right? He said he had acted, directed, produced, recorded songs. Um, there were some other things that I don't recall for sure what were. Apparently, one of them was being a host. They showed what appeared to me to be the set of the David Letterman show, so I was like, oh, well, David Letterman, right? <laughs> it looks exactly like his set. And he said that he was best, he's best known for accentuating others, but now it was time for him to accentuate himself. And I was like, okay, someone that uses pretty big words, right? So anyway, um, and like I said, he was a name dropper. He mentioned Robert De Niro, Michelle Obama. I know there were probably at least two other names that he mentioned, but like I said, they went through the clues so super fast that I did not have time to, like I wasn't even eating or doing anything else whenever I was watching this, and I didn't have time to write down everything that I saw and heard because it seemed like they were just talking so much faster, like they were trying to rush through everything or something. I don't know. Maybe they took 15 minutes out of their time. I don't know, but anyhow, um, so the song that he performed was You Make My Dreams Come True by Holland Oates. I love that song, and as I said, I thought he did a really good job, but now, to me, his voice did have a little bit of the graveliness to it and did seem to be the voice of someone who was older, so I did my first guess I did go ahead and go with David Letterman because I was like <laughs> David Letterman set and yeah but then some of the judges pointed out some clues that I did not notice one of which was it wasn't just the what looked to be the set of David Letterman there was a teddy bear sitting um on the, like, the host is talking to the person, and the person that they would be talking to is a teddy bear, so, but I was like, I mean, it could still, you know, there's quite a few people that you could connect, you could connect me to a teddy bear, I love teddy bears, that was weird, must have been a bird, I <laughs> thought I saw someone walk behind my car, so, anyway, um, so, yeah, there was the bear, and they mentioned the host thing. I didn't have time to write that down whenever I was looking at the thing. There was a picture of an F 
uh, an FOO. There was a picture of a UFO that one of the judges mentioned. They mentioned that he said he got an Oscar and there was a chest of gold in the clues. And so the chest of gold and hosting the Oscars and the talk show thingy. I don't know that Arsenio Hall ever hosted the Oscars. But the talk show thing and the chest of gold got me thinking about Arsenio Hall, you know, coming to America, the original movie. Um, Eddie Murphy played for the prince and Arsenio Hall was his assistant for lack of, lack of a better word. I can't think of what they, what they call um, the, the part that he plays to the prince. But anyway, and then of course that got me thinking about Eddie Murphy and I'm like, well, he's been on several talk shows. I'm sure that he did something with a teddy bear in it. He's hosted the Oscars. I'm sure he's been in something that had a UFO on it, you know. <laughs> and so my final guess, well, I don't know that it was my final guess, but I was thinking, yes, it was my final guess, was Eddie Murphy for Snell, which is part of why I was so disappointed when I saw who it was. But anyway, I would love to see Eddie Murphy on this show. I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but yeah, I'd love to see him on here. Oh, and they are showing some um, characters who are not actually participating on the show in a singing way, but there's like the sleuth rooster who is going to help us notice clues that we might not notice and the one that he showed like they brought him in between seashell and raccoon and the one that he showed for this episode was the hot dog in the background for sea seashell and i was like i mean how did they not the judges didn't mention it but i definitely noticed it it was obvious so but um, and he wanted us to try and guess who he was, and I'm going, I mean, maybe it's Nick Cannon, and that's why he's not on the show, but my actual guess for who he is for now <laughs> is Joel McHale, because as I said, he has guest hosted on the show a lot, and yeah, that's who I'm going with for him, but now to talk about Seashell and her performance. Um, the clues for Seashell that I noticed there was a hot dog, there was a sand castle, there was chameleon. Now, the judges at the point when they're seeing the clues for Seashell, I'm almost certain do not know that there is a chameleon on the show, but that made me think that maybe Seashell is connected to chameleon in some way, like perhaps Seashell is Miley Cyrus, and though I'm pretty sure there's stuff in the clues that um, points toward that she's not her, but... <laughs> Perhaps, say, for an example, Seashell is Miley Cyrus and Chameleon is Billy Ray Cyrus or something along that line. Say, Seashell is Jessica Simpson and Chameleon is Nick Lachey or something. I know they're not married anymore, but, you know, there's a connection because they used to be. But anyway, so yeah, Seashell's Clues, Hot Dog, Castle, Chameleon. There was a cowboy hat, brown cowboy hat. There was a witch's broom. There was a golden bell, um, look like from a bell tower or something like that. And she said that she hasn't sang in a really long time. The song she performed was Listen to Your Heart, which I cannot remember who sings. I didn't, I wasn't paying attention whenever they showed it, so, and I couldn't think of who sang it, but she sang the song Listen to Your Heart. Anyway, um, and she mentioned that she was a child actor, and she's definitely a singer. She was nervous when she first came on stage because she hadn't sang in quite some time. So my initial guess for her, and the one I'm still sticking with, is Jamie Lynn Spears. Jamie Lynn Spears, um, on Zoe 101, a lot of times they would dress up like cowboys and cowgirls. And she said that she's always wanted to sing on stage. She used to do it a long time ago, but she went on to concentrate on other jobs. And we know she had a baby when she was still making Zoe 101. Um, she was she was doing concerts then and doing Zoe 101. Um, and someone mentioned, I can't recall exactly who it was, um, someone was talking about Hilary Duff and that the chameleon could, 
could also be considered a lizard and she was Lizzie McGuire. And I'm going, yes, but there's a chameleon on the show and I feel like there's a connection there. But anyway, um, it, I feel like I have to connect the dots, you know, the witch's broom, that bell, the cowboy hat, chameleon himself, the castle, the hot dog, um, there are a lot of places that hot dogs are well known, but the ones that come to mind for me are Chicago and New York. So, you know, I might do a little bit of a little bit more research <laughs> into that, or I might just wait and see what the clues are for the next episode that she's going to be on, which is probably going to be episode three, but I wouldn't swear to it. They like to switch stuff up and confuse me. <laughs> but so the next one to perform was Raccoon. They showed what was what appeared to me to be an open-faced hamburger. Now, it could have been something else, um, but the open-faced hamburger makes sense with who I'm thinking for this character. And I've named this guy several times, and his name actually just now came to me. But um, on some of the movies that he is on, he makes hamburgers at his restaurant. So, he... They showed a gel, and he mentioned that he nearly died years ago. He spent a lot of time locked away, and, and I can't remember. He said something about other people who were locked away with him who were innocent, but he was guilty. And I'm going, ooh, OJ just admitted he was guilty on national TV, but that's not who my guess is, do um, but anyway, so yeah, it, they showed candles, and like there was the raccoon at the top, and then below the raccoon was a snake, and that was on like a, a thing that looked like, to me, it was like a board with a crest on it or something, like a family crest. And he said he promised to only do good from now on, and the song he sang was Wild Thing, You Make My Heart Sing. Um, <laughs> But anything, anyway, and this is not discriminatory in any way at all, but to me, he sounded like an older person and like his singing tone to me um, made me think of a certain particular person. So for that reason, I was like, it seems like he's an older black man. And as I said, I did not think he sang very well, but he was very entertaining. He used his hands a lot. He got down on one knee um, when he was performing and such as that. So my first guess for him was the dad from Friday, whom I just remembered is named John Witherspoon. So I don't know what I did with my ink pen. I guess it's in the glove box. But anyway, um, I'm going to try to remember to write that down. If I don't, maybe I'll watch this video and I'll be like, oh yeah, John Witherspoon. That's the the dad's name from Friday. Like I said, he worked in a restaurant on there, you know. Tastes so good, it makes you want to smack you, mama. So yeah, he worked in a restaurant on there and one of the things that he made was hamburgers. So I don't know that they were open-faced hamburgers. They might have been. Um, but yeah, he's my first guess. And then Kim Jung mentioned Mike Tyson. Like some of them were thinking possibly a boxer. And he mentioned Mike Tyson, which made me go, hmm. But I don't feel like it's Mike Tyson. And as I said, there's a hamburger, I think. It's open-faced. And the hamburger thing at that time made me go, oh, perhaps it's George Foreman. And I have an Alexa in my house now. Thank you, Kimberly. My middle daughter got me that for Christmas. And so I was like, hey, I was like, Alexa, how tall is George Foreman? Because this guy looks to me like he's about the same height as Nisi and Ash or maybe a tidbit shorter. And she said six foot three. And I was like, so no, LOL. <laughs> Definitely not George Foreman. But that was what I thought of with the, um, the hamburger, you know, the George Foreman grill. So I, I was like, maybe, but yeah, um, 
I'm still thinking that he is probably John Witherspoon. I have mentioned John Witherspoon. I've guessed him for seasons, um, probably maybe ever since the first season, actually, of The Masked Singer. I've been guessing John Witherspoon, who plays Ice Cube's dad, and um, Mike Epps's. Well, I was thinking Mike Epps was Ice Cube's cousin on there, but I don't. I think they're. I guess they're just friends. But anyway plays Ice Cube's dad on the Friday movies, and he is my guest for, for Raccoon. I really hope that that's who he is. <laughs> I would love to see him on there. He's just so entertaining, but I feel like he could probably sing better. But, I mean, you know, he's getting old, and goodness knows I can't sing either. I mean, you know, I used to kid myself and tell myself that I could, but... <laughs> Sometimes I do pretty good on the singing games. But anyway, back to The Masked Singer. Right? That's what we're here to talk about. So, the last one to perform was Porcupine. One-eyed Porcupine, the internet was calling him. He corrected everyone and told them they were calling him Porcupine. He is not Porcupine. He is Robopine. So, from now on, I am going to try to remember to call him Robopine. And I definitely like his outfit the best of all of them. I've seen all of the outfits, um, even the ones from Group B, I've seen on the internet, and I'm sure you have too, but I really love Robo Pine's outfit the best. Now, I just realized that I was going to write down <laughs> who the ones from Group B are going to be, and I haven't done that yet, but we can do that by process of elimination, right? Anyway, the clues for Robopine, they showed like the computer techie type stuff. Like when you're watching Iron Man and he's in the suit and it's pulling up all the different things, you know, that he's putting, he's inputting for it to do. And it showed that sort of stuff. And he indicated that he had had a tough upbringing he wanted to be an actor for a long time, but it took him quite some time to get his foot in that door. He said he made a random phone call, and the right angel answered, and it opened the pathways that he had been looking to have opened. There was a spacey-type-looking plane. Apparently, I wrote that in more than one spot. I thought I missed it, and then I, so I wrote it down again. But anyway, there was a spacey-looking plane, like, sort of a stealth bomber type looking plane. I did not catch very many clues for him at all. The song he performed and did a very good job at, in my opinion, was Never Too Much by Luther Vandross. And then so I, um, when the judges were talking and mentioned some of the clues, I was when I wrote down the space type plane thing again because they showed a picture of it when one of them was talking about something that I ate. Now, don't recall what was. But anyway, and they mentioned that it took him a while to become an actor, which I hadn't actually written in my notes. I was like, I'm pretty sure that I'll remember that. And so when Nisi Nash was talking to him, she asked him what made him decide to do this or what he thought of doing it, or I can't remember exactly what it was that she asked. She asked him something anyway about doing the show. And he was like, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It was just so exciting. He's like, I love to perform. My kids and grandkids have been telling me that I need to stop doing it for quite some time, but I just enjoy it so much. And she's like, stop? Like, why? And he's like, I mean, I am 60 years old, right? And so they were like, I mean, this is the Masked Singer. That could be a ruse. It could be... And so I'm I'm looking at him, and he's a great big. It, the costume is is big. To me, he looks like somebody who is at least six foot, between six three and six five, somewhere in there. Oh, ironically, the person that I'm guessing for him is exactly between six foot three and six foot five. He's six foot four. <laughs> but anyway, so my my first guess for um, Robo Pine which I thought was, like, entirely too obvious, was Robert Downey Jr., who is 55. He has kids, but I don't think he has any grandkids yet, so I was like, no, maybe not. 
So then I thought, well, maybe Denzel Washington, which is another person that I would love to see on a season of The Masked Singer. I was like, yeah, maybe it's Denzel Washington finally. He's 66, but I need to look at, like, I need to look through the clues. I was telling my son I found one actor who is exactly 60 years old who was in the movie Total Recall, but he only has one kid, and I'm, it didn't mention any grandkids for him, and I can't think of what his name was right now. It's James something, I think, and I keep wanting to say James Goodman, but I'm not sure that that's right. But, um, he did not start acting until he was 37 years old. My guess, which I just realized that I never wrote down <laughs> for some reason. Anyway, my guess, um, well, okay, there was also a little statue, a little toy statue thingy of George Washington. So, that has something to do with the, um, maybe I should have looked up who played George Washington in a movie. Ooh. But I ran through a whole lot of thoughts on who it could be. I was like, Quentin Tarantino. My son said The Rock. I said Hulk Hogan. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like The Rock is too young. I feel like Hulk Hogan is too old. The Rock is like 44, I think. And Hulk Hogan is like 67. And I'm like, no, that can't be it. I checked Harrison Ford, Clint Eastwood, Robert Wagner. They're all considerably older than I was thinking they were. Um, but I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe the size of, um, Robopine and everything, perhaps he's Steven Seagal. I'm pretty sure that Steven Seagal didn't start acting until he was older. And I'm also pretty sure that I've seen him on stuff where, you know, he would have another movie come out and he would go on some talk show like Jimmy Kimmel Live or something. And they would be like, so... Here we are again, and he'd be like, yep, yeah, my wife and kids keep telling me that I need to stop, but I mean, why? I didn't get into this until later in life, even though I wanted to before then. So, that's part of what led me to Steven Seagal. Now, he is 68 years old, which, you know, is even older than Denzel Washington, but, and he said he's 60. I'm pretty sure he just said he's 60. I also considered Brian Cranston, who also only has one child. Um, Quentin Tarantino only has one child. I'm not sure if I recalled mentioning that or not. Um, but I'm sitting here looking at Eddie Murphy's name going, hmm, perhaps Eddie Murphy is... <laughs> I don't recall him being on anything robot -y, but I almost looked up Will Smith. There were a couple of people. I looked up Owen Wilson, who's 52. I told my son, I was like, I was thinking, you know, like it could be Johnny Depp or Brad Pitt. Um, somebody else I named in that age group that I can't think of who was now, but the person turned out to be 52 and had one kid. Brad Pitt, we know, has several kids, but he doesn't have any grandkids yet. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm going with Steven Seagal for Robopine right now. He was in a movie that I should have written down, but I did not. It came out in 2016, and it was about a... A nation where the the people that take over use... I'm not even going to remember what it was about. Anyway, it, it had robotics in it, is the point. It had robotics in it, so I was like, don't even... Anyway... No, I don't have any money on me. Maybe next time. So, yeah, he saw I was talking, and <laughs> he has no idea what I was doing, but, um, yeah, he needed some bus money. So, um, oh, now it occurs to me I have some change in my door, but I don't know how much it costs to ride the bus. Anyway, I'm sitting here with my son's donating plasma again, so... Um, there are a lot of homeless people around in this area of the city. 
and several of them take the bus, especially when it's cooler like it is today. It was like 81 degrees yesterday and 46 today, so I'm wearing my coat. Not sure if I mentioned that at the first or not, but yeah. As I was about to say, he is in that movie that was made in 2016, which involves soldiers that use robotics. Um, they're like reinforced soldiers with robotic technology and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that I've seen the movie, and I'm pretty sure that he plays for one of the robotic soldier people in there. He may not. He may play for one of the leaders of one of the organizations, or for the leader of the nation itself. I can't recall for sure. But he made his first movie in 1988. I was thinking that meant he was 36. Let me see. Uh... <laughs> Now my brain's not working. Um, he was born in 1952. He made his first movie in 1988. Yes, 36. <laughs> I was like, uh, nope, I don't think so. But anyway, um, so that guy, that poor guy a while ago probably thought I was talking to somebody on speakerphone on my phone. Anyway, um, but yeah, I am going with Steven Seagal because he did not get into acting until later on in life. He's a tall guy who's broad-shouldered, and I feel like Robo Pine is that type of person. I looked up Arnold Schwarzenegger, looked up some stuff on him. I, was, I started to look up Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I feel like the comments that he made about trying to get a foot in the door at, in Hollywood... I feel like he's a an American, and I feel like he's, even though he's 60 years old, I feel like he's someone who is very active physically, because my impression of him as he was performing on stage, as I told my son, I'm sitting there going, okay, so like, this is Justin Timberlake, because he moves about the stage like someone who's maybe close to 40, um, he sings good, has a very, very good voice he seems to be a wonderful performer performer <laughs> Justin Timberlake of course sang when he was younger and then he went on to his solo career and then he did Alpha Dogs is what I'm pretty sure me and my son decided the movie was called I was like Alpha Dog if I remember right and he's like oh I think it is called Alpha Dogs wow you almost got it like right on the first <laughs> guess but anyway um I think that he didn't make that until probably at least four or five years into his solo career. So I'm thinking when he made his first movie, he was probably about 23, 24, which for Hollywood sometimes is considered later in life. But anyway, so yes, for um, before I get distracted again, um, I think Robo, almost a Robocon, I think Robo Pine is... Steven Seagal, and, I'll, and I really look forward to finding out who he actually is. Um, that's going to be fascinating to me. So, as I mentioned earlier, Snail was the one that got eliminated. My final guess on Snail was my second guess on Snail. I went ahead and went with Eddie Murphy because I was like, well, I think he sang pretty good. And um, the outfit, you know, couldn't really move about the stage, kind of like the one... Russian doll thing, which had me wondering if maybe one or the other or both of them are in a wheelchair or something. Um, but anyway, my guess was Eddie Murphy. There was a top hat on the back of it, which was the part that they opened whenever they revealed who the snail was. And I was like, I feel like it's probably still Eddie Murphy now. They were talking about, I think it was Robin Thicke mentioned it, how the snail didn't sound to him like he was singing with his real voice. He almost sounded like he was throwing his voice somehow, but he's like, but it might be the costume, it might be the outfit that it's making it sound that way because it's as big as it is and it's shaped the way that it is and maybe the stuff that it's made out of or whatever. And Jenny McCarthy said, yeah, it's kind of like, he sounds kind of like Kermit the Frog, right? So, 
I had got in the habit of writing down who the judges guessed because that way I remember I can compare their guesses to mine. Um, but I don't, I didn't do that with this particular episode. And of course, I'm not going to remember who it was that they guessed because, as I've mentioned several times, my memory is not as good as it used to be the, a lot of the time. <laughs> Excuse me, I sort of say the majority of the time, but. Just a lot of the time, my memory is not as good as it once was. So, it turned out that Snail was actually, drum roll please, I don't know if you can hear that, Kermit the Frog. So, like I said, a lot of kids were probably, and perhaps some other people like, oh my god, I can't believe it's Kermit the Frog, especially kids, as I say, because, you know. He's a Muppet. He's on Sesame Street. Um, you know, cater to the kids. That's fine. But, in my personal opinion, my thought when they revealed him was, okay, hmm, how ignorant. Um, the man who talked for Kermit the Frog originally passed away in 1990. That was Jim Henson, of course, the guy who designed the Muppets. And I, so I was like, well, maybe it was Nick Cannon who, like, maybe Nick Cannon's talking for Kermit the Frog. Because to me, when Kermit the Frog was talking after he was revealed, he didn't even sound like Kermit the Frog. His voice was way deeper than Kermit the Frog's voice. So I'm like, okay, so maybe that was Nick Cannon, and that means that he'll be on the next episode. Well, the person who took over, well, in 2017, the person that started talking for Kermit the Frog was Matt Vogel, and um, I, I had looked it up on the internet, and it said that a lot of people still don't recognize his voice or acknowledge his voice as the voice of Kermit the Frog, and I'm like, I mean, is it that they don't recognize his voice? Because if he's doing the voice of Kermit the Frog, he should sound like Kermit the Frog. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know some actors and um, comedians who could totally do the voice of Kermit the Frog and actually sound like Kermit the Frog. To me, this guy's, like, his voice was just entirely too low to me to be Kermit the Frog. But anyway, that was who was in the outfit of the snail. And like I said, I feel like that's why snail was taken off first instead of raccoon. And I'm hoping that none of the other characters are Muppets. Maybe Piglet is actually Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. You know. It's like, how are we supposed to guess who's behind the mask if they can actually be people that, if they can be people, characters that aren't real people or characters, you know. Like, oh, are you having such a hard time finding celebrities that want to be on The Masked Singer that you have to have Muppets be on there. I mean, hey, let's have an animal on there. <laughs> He's my favorite Muppet, you know, just saying. <laughs> anyway, Oscar the Grouch. Um, but yeah, I, so I was disappointed with the results of the first episode because I felt like they threw that one in there and was like, oh, well, let's just have him eliminated first, regardless who gets the, the least votes. The outfit was cool. The outfit was really, really super awesome. Um, we like to try to think that the outfits have something to do with who is in them a lot of the time. And obviously that wasn't true, true for him. What's a snail got to do with a frog? I mean, I don't know. But anyway, I guess they both go around the pond, maybe. So, I don't know. But as I said, I was disappointed with who it turned out to be. I'm sure there were several people who were thrilled to see that Kermit the Frog was on The Masked Singer. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I told my sister, um, she wanted me to tell her about the episode because she had orientation for her new job last night during the episode. And I was like... Um, I sort of say, well, let me read you our text, but they're in my phone, which I'm using to record this, so, but anyway, yeah, I told her that I was, like, I told her Seashell and Porcupine, um, were my favorites, I love Porcupine's outfit, um, I feel like they're probably 
both going to be on the finale. I might change my mind whenever group B does their thing. But I told her I was like, I was um, kind of disappointed with who Sna Snail turned out to be. Like, Snail was the one that got revealed. And I was kind of disappointed with who he turned out to be. And she was like, who? And I said, Kermit the Frog. And she was like, oh, right. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, she has grandkids, so, you know, her grandkids watch it, so they might be totally, completely thrilled to see that he's on there, though they might rather Bob the Builder be on there, or Dora the Explorer, or somebody like that, and they might be, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, but, I mean, the, ga the, sh the game, I mean, it is a game, because, you know, we're supposed to guess who's behind the outfits, but, um, the show is still entertaining, I just, I just found that highly dis disappointing when I'm sitting there trying to think of someone who acts or is an athlete and can sing. And also, she, Niecy Nash did not tell th about the stuff that all of the characters have, like, you know, nine Oscars, six Emmys. They're putting it off like this is the most star-studded season there is. And the stuff that I saw that they showed on the screen, I was like, okay, well, maybe when you divide it up among ten people... Um, realistically nine, but anyway, when you split it up among ten characters instead of sixteen or fifteen, then yeah, okay, I guess I guess maybe it's impressive, but I didn't like she didn't say what they were, and I I'm gonna have to rewatch the episode and pause it at that point, which is like maybe maybe 90 seconds into the episode, but anyway, um, yeah, I need to pause it at that point and watch it and write down, or not watch it, look at what that says and write down all of the, you know, how many Oscars, how many Olympic medalists, um, maybe how many tattoos, I don't know what all was even on there because it might have been on the screen for 30 seconds, which was not enough time to take it all in, and as I said, she did not read any of it, I mean, you know, she didn't do like Nick and be like, this season our characters are going to have X amount of, th like, to me, they made, they brought her in on a thing like a queen rides on and they made a bigger deal out of her being the host instead of Nick than they did about the clues, in my opinion. Like, they took up so much time with that that they, it seemed like they kind of had to rush through everything else, if that makes sense. But I still love the show. Don't get me wrong. I just, I really feel like they rushed the clues on this episode for some reason and I was not thrilled <laughs> that Snail turned out to be Kermit the Frog but I will continue watching and we'll see who the other characters are see if any of my first impression guesses were right about any of them I just reminded myself that I was going to um, by process of elimination name who's going to be in group C Okay, so we had Snail, Seashell, Raccoon, Robopine, and Russian Dolls on group, in Group A on Episode 1. So, Group B for Episode 2 will be Grandpa Monster, Black Swan, Piglet, Phoenix, and Chameleon. And I am not even going to try to guess which one of them is going to go home first. Um, yeah, I don't know. Grandpa Monster, Black Swan, Piglet, Phoenix, Chameleon. Did I leave one out? Grandpa Monster, Black Swan, Piglet, Phoenix, Chameleon. No, that's all. Okay, so anyway, I feel like this is going to be a short season, but I look forward to seeing who's going to win it. And I need to cross... Um, snail off my top five and I guess I'll just leave it at the top four and see well no no I'm gonna go with the top five and I'm gonna add seashell in place of snail is what I'm going to do because seashell really impressed me and then I may I mean trying to do a top five where there are only 10 characters is that's like half the people so I need to narrow it to three but it will probably take me at least three or four episodes to do that. Oh, wait. In four episodes, there will basically be five of them 
left. <laughs> anyway, but I was going to try to narrow it to three, and then like five episodes, there will, or uh, in five episodes, there will be five left. So after about four episodes, there will be six left. They'll be halfway to three. I don't know. Uh, I just wish that they had more characters on there. I understand they probably don't because of COVID-19. Um, maybe they contacted people and people were like, well, I don't want to be on there at this time because of COVID-19 or, you know, who knows. But, so, keep watching the show. Um, continue watching my videos. Check out some of the other ones um, that I have if, if you would like to. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I feel like there was something else that I was going to say about the episode, but right now I can't think of what it was. I'm just glad that I actually thought to write down the names of all the songs that they performed to this time, because last season I was going to do that, and I kept forgetting to do it because I just got caught up in watching. But anyway, um, I guess that I am going to go ahead and go for now, and if you... If there's anything that you would like to leave a comment about, go ahead and leave a comment. I was going to Google and check and see whether there was a wild turkey on the mask Singer already, but I didn't want to accidentally find out who Snail was before I actually watched the show and tried to make some guesses of my own, and I was afraid if I Google anything that has to do with it, it's automatically going to show me and tell me who, <laughs> who Snail was. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, I need to watch through some of my old videos, like the one where I talked about the characters that I would like to see on The Masked Singer. And um, check and see what those were and see if any of them have been on. I mean, I think I did that at the end of last season. Um, so I don't know. Um, was Porcupine and Raccoon, were they two of the ones that I mentioned? I don't know. <laughs> I know there were a lot of people that were doing um, videos about what would you like to see on The Mask Singer? What characters would you like to see? Um, and I've talked about people that I would like to see on there too, as well, like John Witherspoon, I would really love to see on there, but who knows if he'll ever be on there. Anyway, I know, I said I was going to go. My dad was a truck driver, so I of a talker at times. <laughs> Friends of my family. Anyhow, everyone have a great whatever time of day or night it is in your part of the world. Stay safe and stay positive.